decay properties of matter. A physical property can be observed without changing the composition of the matter. So these are things that you can observe with your five senses. So anything that you can just look and see. Um, so this would be things like phase changes. Is it freezing? Is it, is it melting? Is it boiling? Um, those are all phase changes. Uh, any kind of measurement you can take. It's temperature, um, it's volume, it's mass. Those are all um, physical properties. It's size, it's color. A chemical property, though, can only be observed by changing the composition of the matter. So it's really all about its ability to react. So if something is flammable, well, I don't know. I'm going to have to set it on fire and see. Um, is it um, corrosive? Well, I don't know. I have to see if it will corrode something. Um, can it oxidize? I don't know. I have to react it with oxygen to see. Physical properties can then be classified as either intensive or extensive. An intensive property does not depend on how much matter you have. So this would be things like its melting point. Um, it doesn't matter how much salt you have, eventually it's going to melt, right? At whatever melting point, it's like 1600 degrees Celsius. Um, any kind of phase change would be an intensive property. If it, you know, what color it is. You can have a lot of it or little of it. It doesn't matter. It's still going to be the same color. An extensive property does depend on how much matter is present. So this would be things like um, its mass obviously would change depending on how much is there. Its volume depending on how much was there. Um, one thing I will add to intensive properties is density. Density does not change. It's a constant. Physical properties can be used to separate mixtures, and some common techniques include filtering. So this is filtering, where you run it through a filter paper funnel. And then um, this is distillation, where it separates substances based on boiling points. So here we've got some salt water. We're heating it up. So the water is going to evaporate, run down this cooling rod. And here, you've now got your pure water, and the salt will be left behind. A density is the amount of matter in a given space. So this box right here would be the least dense because there's the least amount of stuff inside. This one would be the most dense because it has the most amount of stuff inside. If you were to look at a density column, this is a density column, a bunch of different liquids, and they float on top. At the bottom would be the most dense of the solutions, and at the top would be the least dense of all the solutions. Okay, This is your density equation. Density is mass divided by volume. So we want to calculate the density of a material that has a mass of uh, 52.457 grams and a density of 13.5 centimeters. So we're going to plug that into our density equation. So we don't know our density. That's what we're trying to find out. We know it has a mass of 52.457 grams. And we're going to divide it by our volume, 13.5 centimeters cubed. And our calculator says 3.88570370. Well, we're dividing, so we only need the least number of sig figs, which is this number. So our density is 3.88. Eight, nine grams per centimeter cubed. Don't forget your units. Okay. Student finds a rock on the way to school. In the lab, he determines that the volume of the rock is 22.7 milliliters and the mass is 39.943 grams. What is the density of the rock? So I'm going to plug it into my density equation. So 39.943 grams is my mass. 22.7 milliliters. And the calculator says 1.75960352. And so I only need three sig figs. So 1.76 grams per mil is my answer.
answer. The density of silver is 10.49 grams per centimeter cubed. If a sample of pure sil silver has a volume of 12.993 centimeters cubed, what is the mass? So same equation. This time I know my density, 10.49. I don't know my mass. I know my volume is 12.993. So I'm going to multiply these together to get my mass. And the calculator says 136.2. Here I'm multiplying, so least number of sig figs, so four. So my answer, 136 point, is that a two? This was a two, so this would be three grams. A 24.8 gram marble is dropped into a graduated cylinder containing 10.5 milliliters of water. After the marble is submerged, the water level rises to 12.3 milliliters. What is the density of the marble? So same equation, density is mass over volume. I don't know density, I know my mass is 24.8 grams. Now here, I've dropped this rock in and the water level has risen. So if I subtract my final water minus my initial water, it will tell me just the volume of the rock. So my final volume was 12.3 minus 10.5. So that is 24.8 divided by 1.8. And then that comes out to be 13.777778. I can only have two sig figs, so my answer is 14 grams per milliliter. Physical changes are concerned with energy and states of matter, so physical changes don't result in a new substance. So these will be like phase changes. Melting, freezing, boiling. Those are all phase changes. Chemical changes happen on a molecular level. So chemical changes result in a new substance. So these would be things like um, oxidation, burning. We're going to be getting something new. Okay, here's your homework. We'll check it in class.